Hi, my name is Atif Darush, professor of OBGYN Asiut University, Egypt. Today we'd like to discuss an important topic of routine empiric uh, treatment of women with unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss using anticoagulation, which is heparin, and antiplatelet therapy uh, without uh, a scientific background. And we have to uh, define the actual rule and the benefits and risks of this line of treatment. Pregnancy loss is defined as involuntary termination of pregnancy before 20 weeks. So if it is voluntary therapeutic abortion or therapeutic termination, this is not included in the terminology. Recurrent pregnancy loss uh, definition varies between the different societies. If you follow the Ishri and Royal College, the number of abortions should be three or more, while the SRN mentioned uh, two or more is sufficient to mention that it is recurrent pregnancy loss. The Ishri uh, and Royal College mentions that this uh, repetitive uh, uh, pregnancy loss should be successive. It means three uh, successive abortions. While the SRM mentioned it is not necessary to be successive, can be consecutive or non-consecutive. And the uh, Ishri Royal College mentioned that uh, the, this pregnancy can be diagnosed uh, clinically or subclinical, which is chemical pregnancy positive test. But the SRM mentioned it should be clinically recognized as visualized by ultrasonography and histologically confirmed by detection of trophoblastic tissue on histologic assessment of the uh, products. That is, if we look to the pregnancy loss, the sporadic cases of abortion represent around 25 to 30 percent of pregnancies and recurrent pregnancy loss uh, represents around 1 to 2 percent. And it can be explained in around half of cases and unexplained in around uh, uh, 30 to 40, up to 50 percent of cases. So we have a good number of unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss, but this good number belongs to recurrent pregnancy loss, which is just 1 to 2 percent of the abortus. Nowadays, the uh, recurrent pregnancy loss is reported in our clinical practice frequently, more than before, which may be attributed to late uh, age of marriage, advanced maternal age, which may affect the uh, genetic uh, formation of the fertilized oocyte and change in the lifestyle of the females, pollution of the air, some uh, electromagnetic waves and some technologic issues that may, uh, uh, may uh, contribute to the increasing uh, prevalence of recurrent pregnancy loss. We should mention the Sydney revision for the diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome which mentioned that to diagnose antiphospholipid syndrome, you should have at least one clinical and one laboratory criteria. The clinical criterion for the uh, diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome includes thrombus, which, whether arterial, venous, or vasculopathy, pregnancy uh, morbidity, which is called obstetric antiphospholipid syndrome, which means uh, three or more first trimester losses more than uh, less than 10 weeks of pregnancy, or one or more late fetal loss, which is more than 10 weeks of pregnancy, or severe uh, preterm birth due to placental insufficiency, uh, uh, preeclampsia, intratangosis hysterection, and so on. The clinical criteria should be joined to at least one laboratory criterion, which includes lupus anticoagulant, uh, positive or negative, moderate to high tetra of uh, anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1 and anti cardiolibine And those antibodies should be uh, uh, increased but should be measured twice, at least 12 weeks apart. These restrictive issues of the definition of antiphospholipid syndrome were made 
because the treatment of antiphospholipid syndrome is a serious treatment, this case should be treated by anticoagulation and antiplatelet, which is not a simple line of treatment. That's why they restricted the disease to at least one clinical and one laboratory. If we have a patient with recurrent pregnancy loss without uh, the diagnosis of antiphospholipid antibodies, this case is not considered antiphospholipid syndrome, and we should not prescribe anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy for this case. So for the antiphospholipid syndrome, we should have at least one laboratory uh, criterion and uh, one clinical criterion. These issues are not, are not present in cases of unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss, so no rule of low-dose aspirin uh, and heparin or uh, alone or in combination. Now, many doctors all over the world are confronted with resistant cases of recurrent pregnancy loss with all investigations are normal and no anatomic abnormalities, no underlying immunological, bacteriological, or anatomical causes of uh, this recurrent pregnancy loss. And doctor tries to find any treatment, any solution for the patient's problem. He, uh, uh, he has some right because uh, he tried to help this patient because she is in a bad situation and she is psychologically depressed and disappointed due to repetition of the abortion. And some of those doctors try to uh, test uh, giving those patients low dose aspirin, uh, anticoagulation, which is heparin, or alone or in combination as a trial to uh, 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 stimulate continuation of this pregnancy. And the argument behind giving anticoagulation for those patients and antiplatelet that these drugs improve the process of fetal maternal interface and induce immune modulatory uh, actions on the uh, patient as written in some literature. Moreover, the anticoagulation has an anti-inflammatory effect on the decidua, anti-complement effect which is absolutely, absolutely required to prevent pregnancy loss and thrombosis. And some studies mentioned that uh, low-dose uh, aspirin or uh, low molecular weight heparin enhance endometrial receptivity and trophoplast invasion as proved by some uh, studies which actually were old studies which proved that uh, low molecular weight heparin promotes successful implantation in early pregnancy and these old references belong to 1993. And some studies mentioned that prophylactic use of low dose aspirin and calheparin which is unfractionated heparin in patients with unexplained recurrent abortion would be helpful and increase the chance of uh, passing the first trimester safely in cases of unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss. And some doctors actually uh, are confronted with cases of recurrent pregnancy loss without any cause, and they tried antiplatelet and anticoagulation, uh, but uh, again failed. So they uh, uh, are obliged to change the type of heparin when they were using uh, fractionated, they use unfractionated and vice versa. And sometimes they increase the dose of heparin from prophylactic dose, which is 40 uh, uh, milligrams subcutaneously daily, into therapeutic, which is 41 milligram per kilogram twice daily subcutaneously or use of more than one combination, use of new generations of immunomodulators, and these are trials and errors to, to, as a trial to improve the uh, clinical status of this patient. We should uh, mention at, the, at this point that the American College of Rheumatology recently mentioned that 
they uh, did not recommend treatment with increasing the dose of low molecular weight heparin for cases who uh, are uh, already have antiphospholipid syndrome and those are called refractory antiphospholipid syndrome uh, they did not recommend increasing the dose for the patients who are principally in need of the anticoagulation and antiplatelet so the same applies for the cases who do not need the antiplatelet and anticoagulation these were the arguments of using the uh, anticoagulation and antiplatelet for cases of unexplained uh, recurrent pregnancy loss but the uh, issues of the uh, arguments could be uh, uh, analyzed in the following slides we should mention that we have to discuss supportive care doubtful efficacy of these lines of treatment evidence-based medicine the risk factor for the, those drugs and some miscellaneous issues firstly and most importantly we have to mention that this is very important to tell the patients that you, if you take the supportive care, you will have a chance of continuation of this pregnancy of up to 75% of cases without sophisticated, without empiric lines of treatment. The supportive care is highly uh, efficient in treating those cases in up to 75% of cases as mentioned by the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and supportive care includes prenatal counseling of those cases assurance, continuous monitoring uh, with some instructions regarding rest and uh, practice of sexual intercourse and so on so this supportive care is highly efficient in controlling and improving the status of women with unexplained uh, recurrent pregnancy loss. If you consider 75% efficacy of this line of treatment and you give your patient uh, heparin, what is the uh, argument that heparin was the cause of continuation of this pregnancy and the supportive treatment alone is sufficient to continue it in 75% of cases. Your line of treatment will not achieve result of 75% in cases of unexplained uh, recurrent pregnancy loss. So supportive treatment uh, or care is much more superior to heparin and very care heparin for those cases. And again, what about the efficacy of the empiric use of heparin for cases of recurrent pregnancy loss. A recent Swedish study mentioned that the low uh, molecular weight heparin did not uh, prove to have an anti-inflammatory effect which is argued by the people who use heparin for this purpose and it has no beneficial immune effect in the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. So the efficacy regarding anti-inflammatory and immune modulating in those cases of recurrent pregnancy loss unexplained in a randomized control trial, which has been already published recently, uh, were found to be ineffective. Also, some studies found that the preventive role of low molecular weight heparin in unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss uh, did not prove to be effective in those cases if compared to placebo. Other studies did not find any increase in the life birth rate and pregnancy, ongoing pregnancy rate in the cases of unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss on the uh, uh, cases uh, in a randomized controlled trial. Moreover, the burden of the injection that those cases uh, continuously use uh, make uh, the recommendation of not giving uh, uh, heparin for the cases with uh, recurrent pregnancy loss and we have to drop off the heparin needle as mentioned in many publications and some clinical trials and if compared with placebo again the low dose uh, prophylactic dose of subcutaneous uh, enoxaprine uh, is not recommended to 
case to be used in cases with recurrent pregnancy loss. A meta-analysis found that no evidence that aspirin heparin therapy has beneficial effect on unexplained recurrent miscarriage in terms of live birth rate. The Royal College also recommended that we have to discontinue empiric administration of heparin and aspirin for cases of recurrent pregnancy loss. The Cochrane Review mentions that there is no support on the use of anticoagulation in cases with unexplained recurrent miscarriage. Another re systematic review and meta-analysis mentioned the same uh, So as a conclusion of the previous part of this lecture, we have to consider the supportive care is much more superior to empiric heparin. It achieves 75% success of cases uh, of continuation of pregnancy on those cases. The uh, uh, scientific background behind the use of um, uh, heparin as an empiric line of treatment is poor as proved by recent studies of being not uh, efficient as anti-inflammatory or immune modulator line of treatment. And the third issue was the uh, evidence which was proved by many randomized control trials, systematic reviews, that the uh, empiric heparin and anticoagulant and antiplatelet lines of treatment are not recommended for those cases. This was an important issue, but the most serious issue of this talk is that prescribing anticoagulation for a patient who is not in need of this anticoagulation, in addition to an antiplatelet line of treatment, those lines of treatment are not safe lines of treatment. They are very serious lines of treatment and should be prescribed uh, cautiously. Why not use? Because the uh, heparin may induce thrombocytopenia for those cases as a complication of heparin, particularly unfunctionated heparin. Also, though this case, if uh, subjected to caesarean section or laparotomy for any cause, the epidural analgesia and anesthesia should not be used, so the patient uh, will not receive epidural anesthesia, even spinal, for fear of hematoma formation for uh, around, uh, uh, adjacent peridural uh, hematoma. Also, there is an increased risk, which is mild risk of bleeding elsewhere, or official bleeding, vaginal bleeding elsewhere, increased allergic reactions, increased skin reactions, increased liver transaminase concentration, and increased likelihood of induction of labor. So it is an empiric treatment, but risky empiric treatment. It may uh, lead to uh, bruises at the site of injection, swelling, itching, hypersensitivity, in addition to be an expensive line of treatment. One of the important issues should be addressed in this particular point that the incidence of postpartum hemorrhage after vaginal delivery in those cases with high doses of low molecular weight heparin increased by at least half liter of blood as proved in a study. And a systematic review and meta-analysis recently found that women who received low molecular weight heparin during pregnancy have a significant higher risk of developing postpartum hemorrhage. Despite those studies did not find intrapartum hemorrhage increased rate, but they proved a significant high risk of developing postpartum hemorrhage, which is a serious event that may, uh, uh, that may be a risk for the patient's life herself. So you are prescribing a drug that may be locally, systemically, and postpartum very serious drug that may lead to threatening the life of the patient. What about the medical legal issues? If the patient confronts you in the court that you are the responsible person for giving her a serious drug on an empiric base without any scientific proof, without any proved investigation that 
obliged him to prescribe the anticoagulation for you and she developed intrapartum hemorrhage or postpartum hemorrhage and it happened that one patient went to the court accusing the doctor because she developed postpartum hemorrhage after empiric treatment uh, by heparin for unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss and she developed hemorrhage and w the doctors were obliged to do a hysterectomy for her. So she asked for financial compensation in the court from this doctor. Moreover, you may be accused by more punishment from the uh, authorities because you are using a serious drug without any scientific base. And this is an important issue. You have to protect yourself. Don't write a drug that may harm your life and your career as a good doctor uh, in clinical uh, practice. And don't forget the price. The price is very important for any patient, whatever her financial status. If you prescribe at least 400 subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin injections as pre-prophylactic uh, uh, therapy, this means that you are prescribing at least $15,000 per pregnancy for this lady, which is a, a, a good uh, m amount of money for any family. And this is not based on any scientific background. This is very serious. Look to the abdomen of those women. Many women during examination uh, show us the uh, disfigurement of the abdomen by repeated unnecessary injections of heparin elsewhere in their abdomen. So it is an empiric therapy, but unfortunately it is not a simple empiric treatment unlike unlike iron, calcium, and so on. It is an empiric treatment, but it is as empiric serious treatment, and it is not a benign intervention. It is unjustifiable over treatment, and you prescribe this line of treatment on the hope that the patient may continue. And don't forget that uh, the regular uh, care with uh, improvements the patient's general condition, improvement psychological and physical status of the patient is a good support in 75% of cases, which is much more better than giving them this serious Moreover, how can you imagine the psychological status of any individual receiving unnecessary injections every day, at least once injection for 280 days without any scientific base. What is the impact of this daily injection on the psychological status? This is a very important issue that should be addressed in this particular point. And importantly, to know that this patient, this individual, is prone to some accidents, home accidents, motor car accidents. What about bleeding tendency that is uh, that this patient has been put in this situation. She is in, on the anticoagulation for 280 days and she is prone to bleeding from any part of her body on any uh, unintentional uh, injuries to her body. Lastly, I would like to say that uh, the regular or routine or empiric treatment of heparin or low-dose aspirin in cases with unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss is not recommended and as there is no scientific evidence uh, behind this use as recommended by the ISHRI and, and this is a strong recommendation and should be followed uh, in clinical practice if you don't follow the recommendations of the societies and the randomized control trials, systematic reviews, your uh, practice is deficient. By the ISHRI, so please stop daily heparin in injection based on empiric uh, background and this may lead to a serious complication as I told you and low molecular weight heparin should not be offered to women outside clinical trials until uh, uh, large sample sized uh, well evidenced studies prove its efficacy.
and if you need more data you have to uh, read uh, the and listen to the lecture which is called understanding antiphospholipid syndrome in 2020 which is uh, seen in the youtube out of dot darwish and uh, if you uh, like this presentation press on the icon of like and don't forget to press on the notification and subscribe icons to have more publications and more lectures if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me on the uh, email address artif underscore darwish at yahoo.com and thank you very much